The business cycle is an idea that refers to the ups and downs of an economy. And uh, this is a graph. So on the y-axis, we're measuring real GDP. And on the x-axis, you're measuring time. And uh, on this graph, it's measuring it in the time in years. So you can see that as you go along the x-axis, it's increasing in years. And along the y-axis, as you go higher up, it would be a, indicating a higher level of real GDP. So if you see on the graph, the curve uh, that's graphed is showing that between 1940 and 1950, there's an increasing real GDP. Um, the, then you notice that after 1950, it starts to decline, and then increase again, and then decline, and then increase and decline. This up and down is called the business cycle. There are different parts to the business cycle. Any, um, the, the very tip of the business cycle makes sense is called the peak. So the peak is the um, place in the business cycle where um, it stops increasing and then starts to decrease. That's where the peak is. The decrease in the business cycle, the decrease in real GDP that happens in the business cycle is going to be called a recession or uh, the contraction of the cycle. So right now, um, most of the world is in a recession. It will eventually hit a trough, which is the low point, and then start to expand again into recovery. And then it will hit another peak. And from peak to peak is a cycle, or you can think of it as being from trough to trough. But in any case, a cycle is going to cover all four of those. For like a trough, expansion, peak, recession, or a cycle could be peak, recession, trough, expansion. So that is what a business cycle is and the parts of it. Even though it's going up and down, the real GDP is going up and down and up and down over time, they're going to track what the overall trend is in long run GDP and they're for a country, you're going to hope that your trend, once you draw a line through the averages of these um, peaks and troughs, that the trend is overall an increase in real GDP over the long haul. And usually that grade of steepness on the trend line, what countries are looking for, is about a 2% um, increase in real GDP in the long run. So 2% grade on that trend line. It's important to note that there's no set time to complete a cycle. It's not like a cycle takes exactly three years or exactly ten years. The cycles are quite erratic and unpredictable. You never really quite know what is going to happen in a business cycle. If you can figure out exactly what's going to happen in a business cycle and when the trough is going to hit or when the peak is going to hit, you can become exceedingly rich playing the stock market. So all countries, or uh, organized countries, established and well-functioning countries are going to keep track of their business cycles. And you can gather that information at various uh, websites. For Japan, I believe you can get that information at this, this website, www.stat.go.jp. And you can scroll through the information here at this um, website for different economic accounts. Uh, for the United States, the National Bureau of Economic Research, just do a Google search for that um, title, and um, you can get to a page where they actually date the periods and uh, um, sections of the business cycle. So notice that they have actual dates here down for peaks and troughs going all the way back to 1854 looks like and then um, the um, period of contraction, how long a contraction and how long an expansion so forth and then the total length of the cycle. So it's kind of interesting information there. Uh, and good to be reminded that I'm not just making this stuff up. It's actually real. Okay. Um, 
if, like I said, the business cycles are unpredictable and um, no one has found a, sh a surefire way to f figure out what's going to happen in the business cycle in the future, if you do, then make sure you let me know and I'll give you enormous amounts of extra credit if you can come up with a surefire way, way to predict the business cycle. But um, until then, they try to come up with some sort of indication of what's going to happen, and there are some things that are somewhat telling in the economy that they keep track of. And these um, items that they think are telling of what's going to happen in GDP in the future are compiled into something called the Index of Leading Indicators. And these are things that they track, items that they track in the economy, that tend to change before real GDP changes. So um, these are kind of the rock stars of economic indicators because everyone wants to know what's going to happen in the economy. Everyone's looking to see um, if, you, if this index of leading indicators is going to predict what's going to happen. So this is probably the most closely watched um, indicator for businesses, for investment purposes, so forth. Um, so here at Investopedia, you can look up what the leading indicators actually are. Um, and so like, if you look at number one, the average weekly hours worked by manufacturing workers, you can kind of tell that if they track it and they have seen in the past that, oh, the weekly hours worked um, is usually, you know, 38 hours a week, but now it's gone up to 42 hours a week, then, oh man, if they're working all those hours, then the GDP in the future should increase, and therefore the real GDP in the future, the, the final goods and services, will increase in the future. So all these other items, of um, there's 10 items here that are compiled in this index and, and tracked, and so um, if... Uh, um, they're indicating an increase. The indicator sh should sh should um, change. If if these things are changing, then the indi the index will change, and people tend to think, oh, well, there's going to be an increase in GDP in the future. It's like a predictor, but it's not perfect. Let's say that six of the indicators increase and four of the indicators decrease. Well. Can't, it's hard to say which indicator is a bigger deal in predicting the future. So it's not perfect. When you get it perfect, make sure to let me know. Um, the coincident indicators. Coincident indicators change at the same time that real GDP changes. So these are things that you're looking at that are actually, whoa, what a coincidence, coincident. Um, they change at the same time. That, GD, real GDP changes. So real GDP changes, then these things that are included in the indicators change at the same time. All right, and so here's a list of those um, coincident indicators for your um, curiosity. Now, on my test, I won't ever um, make you know the individual indicators, so you don't have to memorize these for my test. You just have to know the overall idea of the indicators that what like what is a leading indicator what's the idea of it what's a coincident indicator and basically they're they're indicators of changes in real GDP whether they the indicator changes before real GDP changes that's a leading indicator if it changes at the same time that real GDP changes it's a coincident indicator and then there are lagging indicators that change after real GDP changes. And so these ones are, sh are things that change after real GDP changes. And that's just to double check ourselves, to, to kind of um, give us an indication that like, yes, that's right, we did go through the recession since these lagging indicators always change after we've gone through a recession. So here's a list of some of those um, lagging indicators. All right, and that is um, the lowdown on the indicators.